am back in my normal location. I am back hosting the show. This is No One Asked Us. What's that face for? I'm. It's my show. I'm hosting this week. Next week, you get it. Oh, okay. You know, we alternate <laughs> here. We're I thought team. that was like a, you were out on vacation, so there was somebody else hosting your show. No, I mean, I was on location. Logan took the reins on technically my were. week to run the show, so now we're back. People, do you think the people schedule. realize... That we alternate? Do no. you think that's something that people no. know or care about? No. I don't think they do, but neither here nor there. People are listening to our show because Illinois is giving people a reason to listen to our show. So thank yeah. you for everyone for joining us today. This is No One Asked Us, episode 75 overall. Uh, technically our second season, what we're calling the 13th episode of that. Uh, I'm Craig Show. That is the Logan Lee across the screen from me on YouTube, across the ears, across your ears from whatever. Uh, follow us on social media at No One Asked Us Pod on Twitter at Craig W. Cho at The Logan Lee. We're also on Facebook, No One Asked Us, and on Instagram at No One Asked Us Pod. <laughs> at No One Asked Us Pod, excuse me. Our email is No One Asked Us 2021 at gmail.com. All of that is on your screen if you're watching, which we hope you do because we put a lot of work into editing these videos so you can watch our beautiful faces on YouTube. So thank you for watching. If you are watching us on YouTube, Hit the like button. It's right below us, down there, somewhere. Hit the like, and then right next to it, hit the subscribe as well. Get our numbers up. We did cross 200 subscribers, so thank you. To all of you who subscribed, we gained about 15 subscribers, I believe, last week after our episode. So we are across the 200 threshold. Let's get to 300 ASAP. All right, that was a long intro. I like to hear myself talk, especially right now. Logan, how you doing? I got a couple bones to pick with you, but I'll ask how you're doing first. I'm doing very well, Craig. I'm doing very well. Uh, it's a it's a be- beautiful day. It's a beautiful day in South Bend, Indiana. Uh, no, it's Three actually not. And I know probably what one of your bones are, are. One of the bones you're about to pick with me are. And I have a rebuttal to that. So we'll go ahead and get to that. But it's a it's a it's a terrible day up here. The wind is just awful weather, snowing and raining and miserable. It's what you get happy, for living in the happy north? October. Happy it's October. What you get for living in the north? Yeah, oh, that's true. Good point. Uh, All right, go on. What is today's date? Today is October uh, Monday, 17th. October 17th. It is the yes. evening of Monday, October 17th. We got Correct. another great Broncos nationally televised Monday night football game coming up that we're yep. going to talk about in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, uh, October 17th. What did yep. you do this weekend, Logan? I put up my Christmas lights. You're an idiot. <laughs> I am not an idiot. You have a problem. First off, it's not even Halloween yet. They're not on. They were on for that picture just to stir people up, <laughs> but the lights well, are worked. actually on. I picked a pretty good weather day to put the lights up, Ugh. and it's going to snow here tonight. So what better to put me in the good mood than to have the Christmas lights up? How many Christmas trees do you have up already? None. Just the one I'm that's su- up your I'm su- in my bedroom. I was just going to say, I'm surprised you don't have one that's up your round. <laughs> We have one that's up your around in our bedroom. Yes. Uh, yes. Someone, I did someone up, help I me. Did, I am working with an insane person. Listen, I did put up the Christmas lights outside my house yesterday. I did turn them on for the picture just to stir up the controversy on Instagram. But the lights will not be on for another few weeks. They will probably go on November first because that's Christmas season. Um, but as I said, See, I can't gonna, let that it's slide. Gonna snow but... t- it's going to snow tonight. <sighs> so. It is the season, man. Tis the season. You can't let it slide. Why I can't let it. No, in November, I I understand putting your lights up in November. I'll I'll let it let it go. We're, After we're, Halloween, who, go who for cares it. If I, what if I leave them up all year? Does that bother you? They're not on. Yeah, because I can, I'll be able to see. I'll be like, oh my god, that dude's insane. Nobody ever comes out. Nobody's gonna see that. You can't see it from the. You're not gonna look to see the light. Who cares? Some people leave them up year round. Some people have them coordinated so that they turn different colors to match the different holidays. What if I had? What if they were orange colored? And I left them up. Well, no, they're just regular. Exactly. What I'm saying. <laughs> so that's okay. <laughs> Whatever. You and my if they dad. Have them you and my dad for Easter, have a or if they have them green fine. for St. Patrick's Day. They're yeah, sure. You're up. decorating your house. They're not lit up. They will be on November first, and I can't wait to hear you complain about that too. <sighs> No, but I, I can put live with yesterday. that. I, I can live with yesterday. that. It was a nice day. I didn't. There's have nice to do days it. coming next week too. Maybe it could snow. That would, next week apparently would still be too early for you. All so, right. 
whatever. What's your other bone you got to pick with me? You got I think that one? was really the only one. Oh. Um, you did go to a, finally a Notre Dame football game this week. Yes, I did. I did. You picked a great uh, one very, to go to. <laughs> yeah, very, uh, very spur of the moment decision, but uh, some tickets were presented to me. Um, as I've mentioned on the show a few times, I had yet to go to a Notre Dame football game in the however many years I've lived in this town. And uh, I had a great time on Saturday. It was a it was a beautiful night. It was a cold night, but it was a beautiful night. Of course it was. Uh, they did not play well at all. Notre Dame good. is not very good. I think I can confidently say that Illinois is better than Notre Dame at football <laughs> this year, at least, um, which is just not something you can say very often. Um, but it was a great time. It was a beautiful night and uh, finally got to go see a Notre Dame football game. So beautiful stadium. A lot of people. I was. That's just what I was going to ask. I know a lot the of team's not very good, but how's the environment? Ten times better than the environment that they put out for the uh, Kentucky basketball game that I was at back in December. Oh, remember if you tell yeah. me, I tell. Remember yeah. me telling you about that when Kentucky came to town. They were. They uh, even beat them. They upset. Yeah. Them. No, Notre Dame won the game. Yeah. Yeah. It was, an, it was a terrible atmosphere. Yeah. On a Saturday in in December, it was awful. Uh, but go to a football game; it's a little bit different. So. Um, but yeah, great time, great time Saturday night, and then uh, put the lights up on Sunday. So, you know, beautiful weekend, beautiful weekend right. up, in, up here in South Bend. Love it. All right, what did was you your? A, did you have a great weekend? I didn't do much. I golfed on Saturday during the Illinois That's game. Great. Uh, watched during football the game, all day yesterday. Do you watch? Do you watch yeah. Illinois football anymore? I I had the YouTube. I have YouTube TV now, so or I had the stream on the cart. Just, um, I'm a golfer against. Bro. Uh, are you just think you're like jinxing it if you watch the games or that is true i haven't now that you've i've been always doing this... done the last three weeks i've been doing something during the illinois football games so maybe i need to do something oh, i am doing something in two weeks wow okay i, I see yeah. a pattern here but they're three and up so maybe we got to keep rolling with update it. <laughs> craig will never watch an illinois football game ever again <laughs> Uh, what, what caught, what caught your eye, eye this, one, this um, weekend? Something we talked about. Uh, I think we talked about it off the record a couple of weeks ago. We didn't talk about it on the show because um, I don't think either of us had really had this information confirmed. Um, but it does look like it's confirmed now. Uh, Bruce Weber, Big Ten Network. Yeah. Um, pretty excited about this. I know Bruce has a uh, has a history with Illinois fans, and they're. Uh, there's a cert, there's a part of the fan base that thinks he was the worst thing to ever happen to Illinois basketball. And there's a part of the fan base that realizes that he led them to a national championship game. Uh, I am a part of the latter. Uh, I love Bruce. I get what happened. I know it was a little sour grapes towards the end, um, but I'm glad, I'm glad to see him, him coming back to big 10 country, going to be on big 10 network, going to be an analyst, probably in the studio and calling some games. Sounds like he's going to be on the broadcast for the Kansas city game, I believe. Yep. Um, which is the first home game of the season. Um, so Second. that's pretty cool. Second home game of the season. Uh, Third, so if yeah, you count so the that's... exhibition. <laughs> Either way. Uh, pretty cool <laughs> to see that. Um, that's the uh, big was... 10 ring ceremony too. Yes, I did see that. Um, so that will be cool. Uh, big fan of Bruce. Glad that he's going to be back in big 10 country and on the broadcast and back in Champaign. I don't think he is. I, I heard him talking with, I think it was Brett Barron's did an interview with him. I don't think he, maybe been back to champagne uh that's what it sounded that like yeah so, I don't know. Um, so that's what that'll be like. you know kind of the i don't know that they'll necessarily recognize him or anything yeah. but you know it'll be yeah. nice to get him back to town and because he's a he's a big part of this history yeah i mean the, the I mean, best the best basketball team yeah this school has ever had he was the head coach and yeah. i know things didn't end well and that's fine um and things have not gone well since until the last couple of years yeah um people want to blame him for that uh, and that's their that's their right. I'm not saying they're right or wrong, uh, but I'm glad that Bruce will be back in Big Ten country, and I'm glad that he's going to be back in Champaign calling basketball games. Two things. Just, I just mentioned that that game is when last year's team is getting their Big Ten championship rings and raising the banner. Uh, Bruce will be there calling the game. Bruce was the last coach of the last – he was the coach of the last team to win the Big Ten. So that's kind of – I'm sure maybe that's why they picked that game, but they're – um, you mentioned a lot of the fan base being kind of disgruntled with him. Do you think we see it different because he was at SIU and we have the connection to SIU? So he did what he did at SIU and then he came to Illinois and did what he did. So we kind of have both ends, whereas 
most of the Illinois fan base only cares about what he did at Illinois. I don't think that's that affects me at all. Um, I really had no connections to Southern before I arrived on campus. And he was at Southern several years before I arrived on campus. Yeah. So yeah. I don't really have that connection like you do as someone that's from Southern Illinois. Um, but I'm sure that's part of it. I'm sure deep down there's something to do with that. But yeah. um, I just, I don't know. I've always liked him. I've always been a fan and I was, you know, I was happy for him when he landed at Kansas State. I thought that was a great spot for him. I'm glad that he had success there. Um, had some good teams at Kansas State, had some good coaches. Uh, Chester Frazier was on his staff. Um, yep. and, you know, so that'll be a nice little reunion. And but I just, I've just always been a fan of his. And as I said, I know it didn't end well. And I know that there's a lot of people that are upset about that and the direction that that set the program. Um, I, I totally understand those, those thoughts, but I'm, I'm a fan. I've always been a fan and I'm glad that he's going to get, come back and, um, hopefully he gets some, some Jarlings custard cup. Um, <laughs> I don't know if they'll, are they open year round? Um, no, they closed. They might have to open up for for the season just to get Bruce some some custard cup. But how about you? Anything, um, anything fun caught your eye this week? I know you're not super familiar with the sport of uh, of golf. golf? <laughs> Do you know who uh, a certain John Daly is? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I wasn't I saw sure this. if we touched yes. on this in the movies yes. and entertainment portion of our show, but. Uh, Apparently Jonah Hill has signed on to play John Daly in a movie <laughs> biopic, whatever they're making yes. about John Daly's life. And I don't think it could be more perfect. Yeah. I thought that was great. <laughs> I love that. I I don't know what the plans are for that movie, but yes, I saw that too. And I'm all about it. Yeah. I'm all for that. Decision. <laughs> I love it. So 100%. look out for that. Who knows when it's happening? I didn't see a date or anything, but just the fact that Jonah Hill is going to play John Daly. Is that the next time you good go enough to a movie for theater? Me. <laughs> potentially i don't think i'm gonna go see wakanda forever or anything so i don't know we'll see um i'm not you know me I'm not a movie guy moving on to really? our uh, uh yeah moving on oh. to our what do you think last week or what do you think let's do that what do you think that's kind of where we're going with this uh last week logan asked the people when the season comes to a close will chase brown be a top five heisman finisher um Rebbe said this week that he's going to start lobbying for Chase to get some Heisman votes. Chase isn't even on – you can't even get Chase Brown odds right now on the Heisman. So a lot of work to do there. Um, 58.8% did say no, but 41.2% <laughs> of you say Chase Brown will finish top five in the Heisman, which <laughs> – Take those orange and blue glasses off here, boys and girls. <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I'm with you. I voted no, and I do think the answer is no. Uh, I was I was pleasantly surprised by the by the 41 percent that did vote yes. I was I was shocked by that. Um, but if they continue to play like they are. And he continues to lead the country in rushing. I don't think there's an argument for him to not get votes. Um, now, both of those two things have to happen, and I'm not confident that both of those things will happen. Uh, but if they both do happen, then I think he deserves to be in the mix. I'm not saying he's going to win. I don't think he'll be final top three. I think top five is, if again, if those things happen, I think top five is an option. Yeah, uh, but again, I was pleasantly surprised by the the fandom. Um, if it said top ten, I probably would have said yes because I think he's going to oh, keep yeah. doing what he's I doing. He, I think, he'll and be I top think 10. Illinois is going to finish nine and three or ten and two. Yeah, of the regular season, which I think he'll definitely be top ten, top yeah. five. That's like invite to no, New York. I, get it. I don't. No, I, know. I don't think that's happening. I know, but forty one percent of the Illini Nation thinks they will. Our question this week for you all, beautiful listeners of this podcast. Um, Illinois football and basketball are both ranked in the AP poll. We'll get into that more. So we're asking you who finishes their season ranked higher in the AP poll. So we're going to have to wait a long time, wait a couple months <laughs> till April to see the answer to this. But a couple months. <laughs> will, will Illinois basketball or Illinois football finish the season ranked higher in the AP poll? I think it's going to be close because I think Illinois football finishes the season ranked. So basically we're deciding if Illinois will finish. What are they at now? 
18? 18 football. So if football finishes higher than 18 or basketball finishes higher than 23 or 20, or are they 23? Is that what they are? No, I'm, I'm talking head to head. I'm Wait. talking, will Illinois football, if Illinois football finishes the season ranked 17th, will Illinois basketball finish ranked higher than 17th or lower oh, than 17th? Got it. Okay. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Who finished, okay, what fair. team finishes higher in the AP poll? Okay. I like it. Yeah. So like we're going to have to wait till April, but that is our question for you this week. Illinois football or Illinois basketball. Do you want to Speaking give of, um, I'm going to say football. I really think I'm going to say football. Interesting. But okay. I'm going to evaluate some things. I mean, I think that is obviously the safe pick as high as they yeah. are right now. But okay. yeah, for sure. That's fair. Uh, Illinois football continues to win. Uh, 26 14 um another controlling win like these th- last three weeks i mean last week was so back and forth because it was such a bad game but i but i never felt like the the only time i felt like the heartbreak was the fumble recovery for a touchdown but which got returned and right uh got reviewed and like i never felt like Illinois was really going to lose that game yeah this week did not feel that either uh 26 14 tommy devito does play um, said that he kind of knew all week. Bielema kind of knew all week that DeVito was going to play, but uh, if he can give his his team an advantage in any way, he's going to do it. So he didn't let it leak until Saturday morning that DeVito was going to play. And he, um, by one Twitter account that I saw, and I wish I had it pulled up. I don't have it pulled up. Um, one Twitter account that I saw from CFB Numbers said that Tommy DeVito was the best quarterback performance of the week. When you take QBR and um, come on, PFF offense grade. So PFF does their grades, Pro Football Focus every week, and ESPN has a QBR. Combining those two or figuring those two, Tommy DeVito had the best week of any quarterback in college football. He was 25 of 32, 252 yards, one uh, touchdown through the air, three rushes, 17 yards, a touchdown on the ground. Uh, Chase Brown, 41 carries for 180 yards 53 yards on three catches with a touchdown he was named co-offensive player of the week in the big 10 uh he had more touches his 44 touches were more than minnesota ran offensive plays they ran 42 offensive plays and chase brown touched the ball 44 times um leading to this 472 yards for illinois 180 for minnesota Illinois only allowed 38 passing yards. They did have three interceptions as well. They took controlled the ball for more than 40 minutes. And like we said, they are up to 18 in the AP poll. They are in the coaches poll for the first time. They were not in the coaches poll last week. They're in the coaches poll at 20. Um, first time since 1983, Illinois has beaten Wisconsin, Iowa, and Minnesota in the same season. Um, I got a lot of stats here. Chase Brown leads the nation with 1,166 yards from scrimmage. That's more than 100 yards than the next closest player in the country. Um, and then some defensive stats here. The Illinois defense is number one in scoring, number one in total defense, number one in the nation in interceptions, number two in pass defense, number three in rushing defense. Holy cow. <laughs> They're legit. Yeah. This Illinois team is legit. They are. Um, it was it was impressive. It was impressive. Um, they they controlled that game really from the from the onset. Uh, as you talked about, Tommy was Tommy was consistent. Tommy was accurate. Uh, I I don't know the exact numbers, but I yes. Craig, keyword to the show, competent, competent. Tommy was competent. <laughs> Um, I think he was better. He's better than competent. This team yeah, is more no, than he's, competent. He has now. been better than competent. We, we can we can throw that that um, competent buzzword out of the window now. I I remember at one point in the broadcast they brought up his his completion numbers, and I think he was like, I don't know what the numbers like. Maybe seven for his first ten completed passes, and like two of them were throws that he went towards the end zone and just was just out of the reach of his receiver just a little too high. Like he was, he was, he was accurate. He was, he was far more than competent on Saturday. Uh, if he, if he wasn't on the field, they weren't winning that game. Um, no. He is, he is an absolute difference maker on that offense. We can say all we want about Chase Brown um, being the workhorse that he is and leading the, leading the con- the country in rushing yards and, 
and everything else. Uh, but Tommy DeVito is he is the person that's going to keep that offense going. And when that defense is playing as well as it is, and you have an offense that's playing like that, and you have a line that's holding holding back the defense like that, that team's tough to beat. That team's going to be really tough to beat. If Tommy is the quarterback the second half against Iowa, they win by two touchdowns. Yeah, I think so. I I don't know. And I you had said that last week. And um, Did I say that last I, week? I think so. And I'd heard okay. other people say it too. And I did at the time I didn't really feel that was the case. Um, but after watching Wisconsin or after watching this Minnesota game, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think he's just he is to that point where he is that much of a difference maker on this offense. And and Art Sitkowski has was fine last year and he was slightly less than competent on during the Iowa game. Um, but it's it is leaps and bounds of a difference between Sitkowski and DeVito. While we're on the DeVito hype train here, this is something I've been thinking about for the last couple of weeks, and it's really locked in since Saturday. You want to know the best part of what Tommy DeVito is doing? What's that? Illinois has something to sell to the transfer portal quarterbacks this yeah. offseason because the yeah. quarterback for next year's team is not currently on the roster. So yeah. they're going to hit the portal again, and you're going to look at I mean, they got a Syracuse throwaway this past season with DeVito, who's turning in to be outstanding. So can you imagine if they get – I don't know. I'm just throwing something out here. I don't have any speculation. If they get Hendon Hooker's backup, who thought he might beat out Hendon Hooker, if they get a Tennessee throwaway, if they get a Georgia throwaway, or if they get a major Power 5 throwaway yeah. transfer instead of a Syracuse guy, like they have the blueprint now. Yeah. Be like, look. Tommy DeVito was sacked 85 times at Syracuse. We have an O-line here that he's only been sacked 10 times, 12 times. I, those are just – those are not correct stats. I'm just throwing numbers. And look what he did. You could be that guy. You were a five-star quarterback who didn't get your opportunity. We're here to give you your opportunity. And they can go get someone like a Hendon Hooker who left Virginia Tech and look what he's doing at Tennessee. Now, I'm not saying that they're going to get Bryce Young's backup or Hendon Hooker's backup. But now you have a better sell to transfer portal quarterbacks of what you could be if you come to Illinois and play in a Barry Lenny offense. They didn't have that last year because Peters and Sitkowski aren't great quarterbacks. You know, they're they're game managers at best that don't get the ball downfield and don't move an offense. Tommy DeVito is a blueprint for what Illinois quarterbacks can be and the pitch to come to Illinois as a transfer quarterback next year is only getting better with each game he plays. Yeah, no, I agree. It's, it's going to be huge. It's a, it's an absolute selling point. And, you know, eventually they'll try to find, you know, bring somebody in from a, you know, as a recruit, as a freshman yeah. and work yeah. them way up, work their way up through the system. But um, for the time being, yeah, I mean, it's as the transfer portal being in the, in the state that it is, and that being as much of a focal point of, the college game right now um that's gonna be huge and tommy devito showing it i mean it's it's similar to what you know we're hoping to see on the basketball floor this year with with taryn shannon and matthew meyer i mean it's it's the same type of thing bringing in um you know high level talent from other schools with experience and giving them a chance to play and that's tommy devito showing that illinois can be a destination location for those type of players yeah Yep, it's uh, the best recruiting tool Illinois has is is Tommy DeVito uh, improving each and every week. Um, do we need to say anything about Chase Brown? I feel like we've already kind of touched on it. But... No, we we don't need to say anything about him. But I, I we need to talk about the elephant in the room here. He needs help. <laughs> he he oh, needs yeah. help. Um, yeah. Again, yeah. I I know we talk about him being the leading rusher in the country. That's the stat yeah. that we keep throwing out. Um, and I'm more than hundred yards. I think I kind of mentioned this um, last year or last week when I mentioned, when I talked about it, but I don't think we actually went into discussion about it. Yes. He is leading the country in rushing yards um, by, by a good amount, by over a thousand yards. Um, but he's no, also hundred, hundred yards by a hundred yards, excuse yeah. me, a yeah, hundred yards, but he's also carried the ball about 40, some 46 more times than the second <laughs> number two guy uh yeah. Blake Corum so like yeah. he needs help <laughs> yeah they I mean I know he's getting it he's getting it Josh McCray is coming back uh yeah. you know that so that'll help 
Um, but he is, we can say, well, I mean, we just said it, Tommy DeVito is, is the main cog and how this whole thing works, but like Chase Brown needs help. If, if you yeah. don't have him, uh, and at this rate, at some point he's going to wear down. Like he is yeah. 41 carries 180 yards. Like that's terrific. Love those numbers, but Oh my God, <laughs> he, we just, you can't count on him to do that every single day, every single week. And I don't, do, I don't, I just don't know where that's going to take you. So yes, help is on the way. Josh McCray will be back. Uh, you get the bye week So yes, there's a lot of reasons to be optimistic about the whole thing, but that's something that we kind of have to, address here yeah. is that 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 needs to happen it needs to happen soon yeah i don't think stats illinois stats and notes put this out but i would be curious to know the last time an illinois running back ran the ball more than 40 times in a single game yeah i don't uh, I, I wish they would have sent that out but i don't think they did so the the main question i have now and the kind of the talking point and everyone seems to to believe this to be true does the big 10 west now run through champagne in your opinion. I, I've seen the side-by-side comparison between Illinois and that's Purdue. That's where I'm, that's where um, I'm getting at. I, I saw that today on Twitter. Uh, I think it was Woody Remarks. but Werner I, tweeted out last night, I know. Okay. Or, somebody, or yeah. Saturday. I saw Saturday. I saw somebody tweet out today. Um, I mean, yes, I would. I want to say the answer to that question is yes, but I, I do think Purdue's going to have something to say here. Uh, I think they're – obviously the other team uh, in the mix here and both of those teams still play each other down the road. Uh, so for me to say it runs through champagne, I don't know that I think they, they both control their own destiny. So if both yes. teams win out, then whoever wins that game is essentially the winner, but Illinois has to play Michigan and Purdue doesn't have a Michigan or Ohio state or even a Penn state left on their roster or on their schedule. So I think going by what's left in the schedule, I think I would still probably say Purdue um, as, you know, the best chance to make it. Now I'm, we'll talk about power, power rankings and I still think Illinois might be the better team. Um, but I think just based on what's ahead on the schedule, I would, I would probably give Purdue the advantage, but here's the, bit. I mean, like always we're in agreement on this, but here's the remaining schedules, mm-hmm. Illinois uh, by week this week. So there's no game for us to preview this week, um, but they are at Nebraska home against Michigan State, Purdue at home November 12th, at Michigan, and at Northwestern. So five games left, uh, one against Purdue, one against Michigan are the ones that you're kind of circling. Purdue this week travels to Wisconsin, then they have a bye week, then they're home against Iowa, at Illinois, home against Northwestern, and at Indiana. So like you said, they do not have the Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State of the world, but they still have to get through Wisconsin and Iowa. I know right. they're not great. Oh, I know it's. But I know it's they not are easy. still. Uh, they are still Wisconsin and Iowa, and maybe they figure things out. I'm with Logan. I, I think Purdue's probably still who I would pick, but that game uh, in Champaign, November twelfth, uh, could be really, really important. And I almost said this a couple weeks ago. Illinois could be eight and one going into that game, and Purdue could be seven and two going into that game. Right. And game day has never been to Champaign. Right. I kind of had that one circled a couple weeks ago, but possible. I didn't say anything. I think it's very, very possible because I if Illinois keeps winning, they'll be a top 15 team. And if Purdue wins the next two, they'll be a top 20 team because yeah. they're just on the outside of the rankings. I think it could be very possible because they game day checked off Kansas. Never been there. They checked that off. Never been to Champaign. I think they're trying to get to places that they've never been. It would be electric and one that I might make the trip for <laughs> if, if we're, if, if we're really being serious here. So, yeah. all right. Um, I think that's it. Like I said, no game to preview for next week. It's a bye week Being I said, he's on the road four out of the next seven days. That was on Saturday. So I think he said Monday, Tuesday or Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Friday, or Friday. Saturday. I don't know. He's on the road for four days uh, recruiting, um, giving them a lot of time off. They needed it. He said, so um, exciting time, exciting time right now for uh, Illinois football. Got five more minutes here before our Zoom closes. Uh, Other scores last week, Michigan routed Penn State 41-17. It was close for a while, but Michigan pulled away there. Purdue barely stuck by Nebraska. Purdue did not put Nebraska away the couple times they they had a chance, 43-37. Maryland, five points better than Indiana, 38-33. And Michigan State gets an overtime win over Wisconsin, 
34 to 28. Anything stick out to you there? No, I obviously I wasn't watching the Michigan Penn State game. I was more invested in the Illinois Minnesota game for obvious yeah. reasons. Um, yeah. But everybody kept talking about how bad Penn State was playing. I kept seeing that on Twitter, but I kept looking at the score and the score did not dictate that. But it was all the other stats <laughs> that really showed that Michigan was absolutely throttling Penn State, even though yeah. at the time they weren't really beating them on the scoreboard. Now they did end up running away with it. Um, there, it's a very clear one, two in the Big Ten. Penn State, I still think, is a clear number three, if you ask yeah. me. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I that outcome was a was shocking a little bit to me. Um, but Michigan, Michigan's good. <laughs> I mean, this saw was a couple really, of national people saying Michigan might be the best team in the country. I mean, it's it's certainly possible. I think the thing that's working against them to this point in the season is that they really haven't had to play much of anybody. No, they haven't. That was their uh, that first was, test. That was their first real true test, and it was even at home. Um, and left, and they, it's not exactly like they have a lot of real tough tests left on their schedule, other than yeah. you know Ohio at, State, Ohio State, and Illinois does go there. Uh, towards the end of the season but i don't really see that that's being a big test for michigan so um, yeah. they could be the best team in the country but it'll be hard to really know that based on who they played so yep yep um the purdue nebraska score closer than i think a lot of people thought i don't know if yeah. nebraska is playing more inspired under their interim or or what but we know purdue has trouble putting away games they, they blew the penn state game week one um so i don't know that was high scoring too 48 30 yeah. or 43 37 a lot of points um and then michigan state picking up their first big 10 win over wisconsin i thought wisconsin might have figured things out with jim leonard and but it must have could have just been a one game one game jolt there um they're they're back down to earth looking for their next head coach no really great games this week in the big 10 uh four teams have a bye illinois michigan nebraska and michigan state that leaves us with iowa at ohio state uh, noon on Fox on Saturday. Indiana at Rutgers, also a noon game. The middle window is Purdue at Wisconsin and Northwestern at Maryland. And then the nightcap, Minnesota at Penn State. That one that one could be good. Minnesota, Penn State could be a could be a good game. Um, like I said. All right, power rankings. Moving and shaking for you. Um, not a lot. Yeah. Not a lot. I, I kind of I mean, yeah, some shaking in the middle, but I left my top and bottom. Pretty much the same. So, all right, hit it. 14 to uh, 11. 14 to 11. Uh, Northwestern, Rutgers, and Indiana, I kept in their spots at 14 through 12. Uh, two of those teams were off, and the other lost again. Uh, Nebraska, I know they played Purdue close. Um, I still moved them down a spot, just kind of the way everything else sh- shook out. Um, but I have Nebraska at 11. Same four teams for me. I think the only difference is Rutgers and Indiana flip-flopped. Northwestern, Indiana, Rutgers, Nebraska. Yep. Bottom three say the same, and Nebraska down one to 11. Yep. All right, 10 to 7. Uh, I moved uh, Wisconsin down to 10. Uh, I didn't think I would see them this low, uh, but they are just not – they're not good. They're not playing well. Uh, Michigan State's not very good, and they lost that game. So I uh, moved them down a spot, and then I moved Michigan State up a couple spots. So they're now ahead of Wisconsin in the nine spot. Um, and then I moved, sorry, uh, I moved Minnesota um, or Minnesota State in the eight spot. That's where they were last week, uh, despite the loss. And then I moved Iowa down from six to seven, uh, even though they were off. Again, just kind of how things shook out. So. Uh, yeah, Wisconsin, Michigan State, Minnesota, Iowa. Our rankings are very, very close. I mean, I think we're to that point where, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's just going to happen. Yeah. yeah, I got Wisconsin down one to 10 and Michigan State because they beat Wisconsin up two spots to number nine. So Wisconsin 10, Michigan State nine. Iowa stays the same at eight. I believe they were off last week. Yeah, they were off last week. So they stay the same. And Minnesota drops three spots from four to seven uh for me yep. six to three or six to four because we know uh, the top three six is my only last change uh, i moved maryland up a spot they got a win in indiana um that's good enough to to get them ahead of some of these other teams and then everybody else is the same purdue at five and i left illinois at four i think those two are interchangeable and as i already mentioned on the show i think that in terms of who is the who has the best shot of making it out of the west i still think it probably is purdue uh, but right now, the way that defense is playing, the way that Chase Brown is playing, I can't not put Illinois in that four spot. So um, I left them there. 
So you got Maryland six, Purdue five, Illinois four. Correct. That's exactly what I've got. Purdue or Maryland and Purdue stay six and five. Illinois and Minnesota. All I did was flip them. Minnesota was four last week. Illinois was seven. Uh, Illinois is now four, and Minnesota is now seven. And one through three, I believe we both have kept the same all year. Penn State three, Michigan two, Ohio State one. All right. I I think Michigan may make an argument to to top Ohio State, but they won't play each other till the end of the season. So assuming they both went out until then, we won't really know that until then. But uh, yeah, as I said, I, I think Penn State is kind of in a tier of its own right now. Uh, they were kind of for a while in that top three tier, but I think they're very clearly not one of the best two teams. And I still think they're better than Illinois and Purdue. Um, so I think it's pretty easy to keep them at three. Yep. Everything's uh, shaking out and we're uh, aligning. Our power rankings are aligning quite a bit after what? Seven weeks. Are we going into week eight? Saturday? Correct. This is week eight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, everything's kind of uh, aligning itself. Uh, you ever been to Knoxville, Tennessee? <laughs> no, but I would have liked to have been there on if, Saturday. If there was ever a time to go to Knoxville, Tennessee, it was Saturday night. Holy cow, was that a fantastic scene. I I saw the the line and I saw the, the hype behind it, but I did not think there was any chance that it was actually going to happen. Did you? I mean... I- I thought there was a chance it could have happened. I think Tennessee's good. And I think they've shown that. And Alabama has shown this year that they're not perfect. Um, so I think it was certainly on the table. I wasn't able to watch a ton of this um, just because I was going to the Notre Dame game. So I did happen to see some of it in the area that I was before the game. But unfortunately, I didn't get to see everything. But um, I did see the guy sitting next to me during the Notre Dame game, right before the game started. He had a, he had the game pulled up on his phone, so we were I was watching it with him. I didn't know the guy, uh, but we were celebrating together uh, that Alabama lost. <laughs> yeah, so, heck yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I would have loved to have been there. I would have. Uh, I had a friend. I have a friend who's an Alabama fan, and he must have been in Knoxville because he showed a Snapchat from a bar or some sort of party or something, um, wearing his Alabama gear, and he was not in the right place. Felt, felt for him <laughs> would hate to be in that that's situation. all i know i've always wondered that like <laughs> i don't know the last time i went to an illinois game as a fan in the opposing venue like yeah. it would be so awkward if you were an alabama fan drove to knoxville and your team got and your team got beat and lost yeah. like do you just go home like do you still go out and, and party i mean you, you i'm assuming you took some time off and you made a trip of it like I don't know. It, it would be an yeah. awkward situation. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, I guess I did watch Illinois play up here, um, but I wasn't like. That's, that's not a trip, I though. Mean. That's like, yeah. That's no, like, yeah. Town. Yeah. yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, also around the college football world, um, USC lost to Utah. I watched that game. I had money on that game. I was, I'm not even going to get into it. It was stupid <laughs> of me. <laughs> um, USC was or Utah was a three point favorite, and I thought USC was going to win, so I changed like I did an alternate line, and I took USC minus one. If I just would have took the actual line and not trying to get cute, I would have won. Um, TCU upsets Oklahoma State in overtime, forty three forty, and Syracuse upsets NC State. NC State without their quarterback. Uh, twenty-four to nine, and the other upset, or two other upsets, three other upsets. Jeez, what a Saturday! Kentucky ten points better than Mississippi State, so twenty-two beats sixteen. Oklahoma ten points better than Kansas, so Kansas drops out of the rankings, fifty-two forty-two. And James Madison, first year as an FBS school, they were ranked in the top twenty-five, and they lost to Georgia Southern, forty-five to thirty-eight. So they are out of the rankings. What are we on now? Pick your pick. It is time to pick your pick, Logan Lee. We both went two and three last week. Yeah, so not I mean, I uh, I maintain a two game lead. Logan is twenty and sixteen. I'm twenty two and fourteen this season. All right, our ten I, games this week. What I was gonna say, I saw that we were getting uh, criticized on our Instagram by a, a loyal listener who. Oh, I haven't have, checked the Instagram. We need to have somebody else on the show that that knows college football. So, uh, oh, I gotta check does, this. Does I didn't see I the Instagram. As, as you can tell, uh, we do great but with checking our social medias. It's okay. It's not that important. Uh, shout out to you, Nick. If you're listening, um, we'll we'll get you on. We can have you be our guest picker. It'll be great. 
Um, I'm a little more prepared for this than I was last week, I'll admit, uh, but only by a little bit. So, oh yeah, uh, I think we're both more prepared for this show than we okay. were last week. Great. I wasn't, Great. I wasn't even, <laughs> and I wasn't in my office. Like I wasn't at home. Like this was that was just thrown together. Okay, this game, this week's games, um, number fourteen, Syracuse. Number fourteen, Syracuse football, six and zero oh, at number five, Clemson. That's a noon game on ABC. Uh, number 20, Texas, at number 11, Oklahoma State, uh, 330 game on ABC. Number 9, UCLA, at number 10, Oregon, 330 on Fox. That's the game day game of the week. Number 7, Ole Miss, at LSU, who's just outside the top 25. That's 330 on CBS. And then Memphis, who's 4-3, and three, at number 25, Tulane, who's 6-1, and one, another 330 on ESPN2. A couple night games, Mississippi State, 5-2, and two, at number 6, Alabama. Oh, I feel bad for Mississippi State. Texas A&M at South Carolina, Minnesota at Penn State, Kansas State at TCU, and Pittsburgh at Louisville. Uh, last five games are all night games, so this it's a good late slate, but not many good early noon games this week. Logan, how are we doing this? Since uh, uh, I think we, we need doing... to keep going on the um, host who goes first, first now. Week? You did. Yeah, we'll switch now. So, so you're back to picking first. I guess. The, you picked first last week? No, you picked first last week. Well, then you should pick first this week. Okay, so now instead of the person whoever hosts, the Whoever host, hosts will pick first. So we're, we're switching. Okay, yeah. so I get first pick. Yes. Um, man, I think there's two pretty obvious ones. Correct. Um, I'm going to take Alabama. Smart. I'm going to take Alabama. I don't think they lose two in a row. I don't think they lose at home. So I'll take Alabama to beat Mississippi State. So you can go ahead and take the other one. And I will take Clemson. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, Syracuse is – it's a story. It's absolutely a story. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's kind of fun to think about Syracuse and some of the other uh, basketball schools that are having pretty good football years too. But, uh, yeah, I think Clemson is too good for that game, uh, for that matchup. So, uh, yeah. That's I something take- that I, uh, I forgot Clemson. to mention in our um, – <laughs> I had the whole. I had a lot more notes here that I should have talked about for Illinois football, but we'll get into them next week. Uh, Illinois is one of ten schools ranked in both football and <clears> basketball. <throat> uh, I guess we can talk about that with with our hoops coming up here in a little bit. All right. Um. All right. So the two easy ones off the board: Alabama and Clemson. Oh yeah. Now it gets tough. Now it gets tough. Um. I'm gonna. St- I'm gonna go pick. I'm gonna go Big Ten. I think that's the smart money. I think. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take Penn State to beat Minnesota. I don't know the status of Tanner Morgan. I know he left the game injured, um, but he was able to travel back with the team and seems to be doing okay. Um, if he doesn't play, that's a big uh, that's a big swing. But I'm still gonna go with uh, Penn State to beat Minnesota <clears throat> in happy in Happy Valley. Yeah, I think those were the three obvious first picks. Um, so good on us for getting those, uh, but we'll probably get them wrong. Uh, all right. Again, hey, I had a five and a week a couple weeks ago. That's true. Um, I was doing well until I wasn't. Uh, now is where it really gets tricky. I think if you want my opinion. Um, here's a school that we've never mentioned on this show before. Uh, and I have no idea why I'm about to pick them. <laughs> Uh, but I'm gonna ride that green wave, baby. The green Tulane. wave, Tulane. <laughs> Let's go. Um, I don't. I mean, I don't know. They're apparently they're good for a, uh, you know, um, uh, American team and AAC. Are they in the AAC? Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I'll We're take getting Tulane. new blood in here. We don't want to talk about the same it. schools every well, week. They're they're ranked. Um, they are. Yeah, when you when you gave me the options for the last couple spots or whatever, I I wanted to make sure the American Conference was was represented. So we're, yeah. we're equal so opportunity, one. equal opportunity conference lover here. Equal opportunity podcast. Yeah, uh, yeah. Green Wave. I'll take Tulane. All right. Don't ask me um, anything about them because I know nothing. <laughs> I can't name a single player. I don't, don't know. <laughs> it's <nothing>. the <laughs> biggest spread left on the board. <laughs> so that's where I'm going. <laughs> Yes, yes. When you don't know, look at Vegas because they normally do, do know. Um, man, yeah, these games this week. I don't, I don't really know. I don't want to take a road team, so 
It might be early. I think this game is going to be a great game. Oh, but I just think I don't uh, – Oregon. Give me Oregon. I don't um, – it's a prove It's a prove it to me game for UCLA. If they win this game, they're legit. But I'm not sure that they're a top-10 team. They're ranked number nine. Um, I think Oregon's a much better team than what they showed week one against Georgia. I know they're back in the top 10, but I'm going to take Oregon at home. Uh, to to beat Tech or UCLA in the uh, top ten matchup. Yeah, that was that was where my next pick was going to be too. Um, all right, I have a I have a game picked out, but I'm just not confident that it's where I want to go. I might be changing up my own thoughts, my own game plan. Um. No, you know what? Screw it. We'll go with it. I'll go with the road team. I'm going to take Texas A&M. Um, I don't really have a good reason for that. Um, but that's just that's just where I'm going. I'm going A&M. South Carolina is my pick there. Great. I'll take the home team. And I home underdog. Clearly pick, clearly pick the wrong one. <laughs> uh, I will also take a road team. Also in the SEC. Hotty toddy. Yeah, I'm thinking they might go into Death Valley and do it. I know Death Valley at night is a tough place to play. But now that I'm saying it out loud, I don't know that I love this pick, but I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to take a top 10 team on the road. They are favored uh, to beat Brian Kelly. One little anecdote from the Notre Dame game is as I was walking out, I just heard one angry fan mumble something along the lines of Brian Kelly knew what he was doing when he left uh, with the, <laughs> the lack of talent that he was leaving behind him. Do you um, think the Marcus Freeman was just the biggest rash decision ever made? Do you think I mean, they, I don't they got someone better. I, well, it's Notre Dame. They probably could have gotten somebody with more experience. Yeah. Um, I don't want to, I'm not certainly ready to discredit and discount uh, Marcus Freeman as a head coach. I, I think yeah. he's young. I don't, don't think he's, Super experienced, uh, but the players really love him. So uh, he's who I, I wanted. He's who I wanted Illinois to hire. I'm, yeah, I'm I super mean, glad with Bielma, but right. I I don't know. That's neither here nor there. I just thought that was funny to walk to hear as I was walking out the stadium. Um, okay, so I'm up. We have three left. We have Texas, Oklahoma State, Kansas State, TCU, and Pittsburgh, Louisville. Um. Hmm. <laughs> I've messed. I've messed around with Texas a little bit this year already, and they I don't think they've done well for me. Um, but we'll stay in the Longhorn State and I'll take TCU. Um, Kansas State's having a having a year, uh, but TCU I think is a good pick. I think TCU's the better team there. I think uh, TCU's legit. Home. I think that's I think that's the way to go. I'm gonna take TCU over Kansas State. Well, you're going to get to pick Texas, Oklahoma State, too, because yeah, right. Pittsburgh, Louisville is trash. Louisville is garbage. Um, so I'm taking Pittsburgh. Okay, great. Um, so that Have leaves fun. me with Oklahoma State and Texas. Huh. I wasn't <laughs> sure I'd have to pick this, if I'm being honest. Uh, Oklahoma State, they're playing well. They're 5-1. and one. Texas is favored. Yeah, big. I mean, it's six, I think. For a road team, that's big. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take Oklahoma State. Um, I just... No, I'm switching. I'm taking Texas. <laughs> Texas is who I had to begin with, and I tried to talk myself out of it, but I couldn't do it. I'm sticking with Texas. Um, yeah, I, I, you pointed out they're 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 a big favorite on the road, so I think that's worth it. So I'll take Texas. Um, they've screwed me over once, but whatever. I had a dream like last week, and I don't know the context of it, but I just remember in the dream someone asked me who my favorite college football team was. And I said, Texas. I don't know That's why. It. Feels like something that would happen on this show. 
you <laughs> you claiming teams all over the country. Um, I did love the Vince Young years. I had Texas hat and had some Texas shirts, but it like never caught. But yeah, it's, I just remember them asking. I was like, Texas. So whatever. You, uh, you and all right. Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. I did just say all right right before you <laughs> said that. Uh, running back down, I have Alabama to beat Mississippi State, Oregon to beat UCLA, Ole Miss to beat LSU, uh, Penn State also to beat Minnesota, and Purdue to beat Louisville. Logan has Clemson over Syracuse, Tulane uh, beating Memphis, and then three Texas schools, Texas A&M, TCU, and Texas, all to win as he shakes his head. <laughs> Oh, I love uh, it. I and I didn't even, I and it, it. Baylor wasn't even an option. I couldn't. Baylor, I, I couldn't almost put Baylor with, on here. I couldn't ride with my boy Chip. I almost I picked put all Baylor the other Texas schools. Sorry, Chip. Hey, uh, guess what? We're like a week away from college basketball. <laughs> In like nine days, Illinois basketball has an exhibition game. Uh, today, the AP preseason poll came out today. The Illini are in the preseason poll. We'll get to them. We'll run through the top 10 in order. North Carolina, Gonzaga, Houston, Kentucky, Kansas, Baylor, Duke, UCLA, Creighton, and Arkansas are the top 10. Those top four all received first place votes, UNC, Gonzaga, Houston, and Kentucky. Um, But UNC received an overwhelming amount, 47 of the 60, maybe 62, I think it looks like. Um, Three Big Ten teams. In the ranking, Indiana on the top at 13, Michigan at 22, and you're fighting Illini at 23. Um, so no Big Ten team in the top 10 for the first time. I didn't catch the year in a long time. Long time. Long time. No Big Ten team in the preseason top 10. But with the 23 ranking for the Illini, it is the first time both Illinois football and basketball have been ranked since 2002 so a major step forward for the athletic department at illinois um there was something else oh i just mentioned it in the pick your pick segment um illinois is one of only 10 university schools or universities in the country with both their football and men's basketball team ranked in the top 25 the other nine are i wrote them down north carolina kentucky ucla tennessee texas tcu alabama oregon and michigan so that is some great company as far as athletic departments go for Illinois to be in. We've said it on the show before, Logan. Preseason polls mean absolutely nothing. So what do you read into this? I mean, they mean nothing, but they also kind of mean something. Um, they mean something in the sense of, you know, what's there? Who's coming back? Um, and I, I think for Illinois' sake, it's just a lot of question marks. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's different when you have Kofi Coburn or Iota Sumu on the roster or even a Trent Frazier and you kind of know what you're getting. Um, I think with for, you know, Illinois' stance here, like they just – nobody knows. Nobody knows what this team is. Your boy Seth Davis didn't even have him in his top 25. Um, so, like, it, it's not really shocking. Um I mean, Seth had like six other Big Ten schools ahead of them, which I don't necessarily agree with. Um, But the Big Ten thing, I think, is the most interesting thing of all of this. Uh, I think it's just another reason the Big Ten has continued to struggle in the tournament. Um, The Big Ten doesn't have any real teams that stand out this year. The best team, quote unquote, best team in the Big Ten in the preseason is a team that barely made the tournament last year and is returning basically everybody. you know, yeah, they might have two, three of the best players in the country, but I don't think those teams are particularly strong at this point. So uh, we'll just have to see. I think it's going to be an interesting year for the Big Ten. I think it's going to be an interesting year for Illinois. I do not think this is a year that Illinois is really going to be focused on necessarily winning a Big Ten title. I think they're going to be – they're trying to build for something something bigger, something, something further along. So, uh, no, preseason polls don't really mean much. Um, but there's something for you and I, people like you and I to talk about. So that's why they exist. <laughs> Content. Exactly. <laughs> Five other teams did receive votes. Purdue, Michigan State, Ohio State, Iowa, and Rutgers all also received votes. Um, yeah, nothing really else sticks out to me from these. Those, I'm sure eight to ten of those will not finish ranked. And there will be multiple unranked teams that didn't even see any votes will finish in the top 20, top 15 
whatsoever. Uh, Ken Palm also released his first preseason poll, and the Illini are a bit lower in that one. Illini come in at 33 on Ken Palm. Top yeah, that was Ken a little Palm. more alarming. Yeah, top 10 on Ken Palm, Kentucky, Texas, Gonzaga, Tennessee, Virginia, Baylor, Houston, Kansas, North Carolina, and Arizona. Um, yeah, I just I don't get these at all. Uh, Arizona lost a lot. North Carolina, I think, is clearly the best team in the country, and he hasn't there at nine. Now, Ken Palm is not himself. It's computer. He's just putting stuff in the computer, and they're spitting out the rankings. This is not Ken Pomery's rankings from his head. This is statistically um, speaking the the rankings to for comparison Illinois finished last year at 20 um, but Houston who Illinois lost to in the second round and was a five seed in the tournament was number two in Ken Palm and they were ranked like 18 or 15 uh, by the AP so Ken Palm's completely different but yeah Illinois is uh, 33rd in Ken Palm but he ranks every single college basketball team and I can't go without mentioning our Salukis are in the top 100. Where number 90. At? Wow. Number 90. They're the second oh, awesome. ranked MVC team behind Drake, who is number 79. Okay. So okay. we'll be talking a little more Saluki basketball this season. That I think the wonderful. expectations are, are pretty high for your Salukis. Uh, the other basketball thing this week was the media, not us, but the media in Champaign was the real uh, media. The real media, yes, was allowed a tour of Ubbin, so a bunch of pictures and uh, videos coming out of that. Did you watch most of the I saw video? a lot of the pictures. I didn't. I wanted to sit down and watch the videos, and I kind of forgot about it and everything, but I, I did see a lot of the pictures. What did you think? Stunning. Um, it's been It's been several years since I've been in that facility, um, but just looking at what they have now, and, and the, I mean, this is – this is what you have to do to compete in college sports is at for every sport. We're seeing it now with, with baseball and wrestling and football's had a, you know, had a, a develop or a facilities makeover. Um, you got to have that to keep up and they needed it and they got it. So it's, that's, it's beautiful. Uh, that's, it's a great, it's a great recruiting tool. Great for those players to have that, that facility, both the men's and the women's team to have that uh, space to, for work, for offices and practices and, meetings and food and all that stuff really cool a lot of stuff there um it's definitely going to be a, a focal point something that they can sell to sell to recruits yeah a couple things one a couple things i knew about it first of all is that it was the first of its kind um i've been first standalone basketball practice facility in the country i believe um, built in like 2006 i think it was just after the final four run i think is when it was built um, so a lot of a lot of schools mimicked oven and improved on it Whitman said he went to Florida and there it's like an exact replica like it's almost the exact same thing as oven um he also said um what was I gonna say there was something to, to piggyback off that and I lost it but um another thing I thought was interesting um I guess re retract my media experience and my media time there a lot of our interviews, like the 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 scrum interviews, where it's a bunch of the reporters standing around the the subject with their cameras, like you'll see post game and stuff. A lot of our scrum interviews were in oven, and they were just like in the hallway. So like we'd be interviewing um, Malcolm Hill, and shoot, I don't know who uh, Michael Finky would like walk and like bump shoulders with us because there just wasn't enough room for twelve reporters. And yeah. a six ten basketball player to stand in the hallways, and normally what they would do them, we would do those interviews the day before they left, or the no, the day before the game, the day they left to go to the game. So we'd be standing there, and their all their suitcases with their gear and stuff would just be lining the hallway, like they didn't even have enough room to to pack their suitcase in the locker room or anywhere. It just, it took up half the hallway lining with their suitcases. Yeah. Um, so it was very, very much needed. Uh, Underwood said the best part about it is the storage space. Like they're using their old medical room where the players would get taped up and stuff before practice. They're using that for storage. They've expanded everywhere. All the walls were expanded out. Um, it's just incredible. Um, the, what what they were able to do um he said and i thought this was one of the most interesting things underwood said that they would not even take recruits in the locker room at oven because they were so like 
not, I wouldn't say embarrassed, but it was so unimpressive that right. he said there were multiple places in oven that they just avoided taking recruits because they're like, they're going to, these recruits are going to see this and be like, I'm not coming to play here. They, they their locker rooms crap. Yeah. So now to have, I mean, and look at the recruits he's got. And so now that he's got this, imagine the other guys. And I mean, it started right. this week. They had, they had Morris Johnson in this week who has already committed in the class of 2024. They had him in who's a top 50 player, another top 50, 2024 and two top 50, 2025s all come in this week uh, to see these new, and they're taking pictures in front of the new uh, signage and stuff in oven. It's just a huge recruiting tool for a program that has been recruiting very well. So it's only going to get better if, yeah. if this says anything. Yeah, it'll be nice. It'll be a big get. <clears throat> uh, it is 11 big days. Big 11 days away from the exhibition, October 28th, it's a Friday night, and then first game is November 7th at home against uh, Eastern Illinois. Anything else, college? No, I don't think so. Bring it All on, right. baby. I'm ready for basketball. Yeah. I, I I told Christy before we started, I was, she's like, what are you guys going to talk about? I was like, um, there's a lot to talk about because normally now is when we shift to basketball. Yeah. And now See, we've got here's, basketball and football. Here's my thing. I don't really love to wish the summer away. Um, that's not really my thing. But once I know the summer is gone, give me basketball season. Like I love football. <laughs> don't get me wrong. It's even better when Illinois is good. But like I just I live for basketball season. So yeah, I'm ready for it. Yep. Um, but it is football season. National Football <laughs> League is still going on. Um I mean, it was kind of a crazy day yesterday. I know we don't talk a ton of NFL on here, but um, the Steelers beat the Buccaneers. The Falcons beat the 49ers. Uh, the Jets beat the Packers. There was one more big upset. <laughs> uh, but a lot of, of upsets um, yesterday. Uh, the, the Cowboys lost to the Eagles. They made it a game, though, so that was, that was okay. Um, but we don't break that stuff down. I did see right before we started, um, the Titans are getting a new stadium. In downtown yeah. Nashville, um, $2.2 billion stadium. It will be a dome. It will be a domed stadium so they can host Super Bowls and other big football events. Um, and I, I believe I saw it's very close to where their current stadium is. I think it's yeah. something said just east of just where the current stadium is. Yeah. So across the river from downtown. Um, that's a place that I really want to get to. I love Nashville in itself. Um, and I think having that stadium now will allow them to – really blow things up and Nashville will continue to grow. So I think that's yeah. good for the Titans. I think it makes a lot of sense. I, I it kind of surprised me when I first saw it. Uh, I'm not like super familiar with Nashville. I have been there several times, but um, I, I just didn't think of it as a city that needed that type of space, but more I think about it, the more sense it makes. And now they're going to be there. They'll be a step ahead of, you know, like the Chicago's of the world that yep. Chicago still doesn't have. Now, eventually they might get it. The bears might move out to Arlington Heights, but they don't have a yep. venue like that. that can hold super bowls and final fours and, you know, big indoor concerts and um, mm -hmm. that type of stuff. So the fact that Nashville's taking a step ahead of, you know, even a city like Chicago, I think that's huge. So, uh, yeah, good for them. That'll be nice. They can do a lot with that, especially being, I mean, it's it's the music, it's the country music capital of the world. I mean, they can mm -hmm. just do so much in the winter time with an indoor, uh, you know, yeah. stadium like of that size. Just think of the number yep. of country concerts or just concerts in general that they can do there. So yeah, that'll be nice. CMA Fest is on my bucket yeah. list. It happens in That's June cool. every year at uh, the current stadium. So I'm sure I'm assuming they'll probably tear down the current one when this one right. goes up and then they'll have this indoors in the middle of summer, which is great. I know Garth had a concert there um, this summer that like, a, I don't think it was a tornado, but a severe storm came yeah. through as he was like, there were thousand, like 90,000 people and the storm came through and people were running for their lives, not their lives, but people were running and so that obviously won't be an issue now that it's in, it's indoor. My yeah. question though was Nashville has been on MLB's list of expansion. So if the city's investing in this, are they going to be able to build a baseball stadium and get an MLB expansion team, which I yeah, think they need? I don't know if that's going to happen now. <laughs> I don't know that they'll be doing both of those things, but yeah, who knows? That's a lot. I mean, that city makes so much money. Yeah. So I'm sure if anyone could afford it, they can. Uh, that's all I've got NFL. Is there anything else you can think of? Uh, baseball, 
which we probably should have, this probably should have been our first professional sport we talked about because postseason is in full swing. Uh, a couple upsets in the National League. Yeah. The Padres take out the yeah. Dodgers and the Phillies take out the Braves. So that's our I NLCS. Dodgers did not Phillies see either Padres. of those things happening, to be honest. I got um, the Phillies of the World Series last week, remember? I know you did. I did not. I took the Braves. So clearly I know what I'm talking about. I have our, uh, do you want to go through our preseason predictions or do you want to wait oh, till yeah. the okay Let's i forgot it. to do it last week i was gonna do it last week and i forgot what, what did we, we say minutes left all right one of us went one for six for division winners the other one went five for six do you know who was who i mean i think i was five for six you were one for six. That's a shame. You had in in the uh, I division took, winners. You had the, you had the Blue Jays, the White Sox, and the Mariners in oh, the AL. So you yeah, had two okay. two of the three went to the playoffs, but yeah. they did not win the division. And in the East, you had the Mets, the Brewers, and the Dodgers. Your one correct was the Dodgers. Yikes! I had Bad the form. Yankees, White Sox, and Astros. Two for three in the AL, and then a perfect three for three in the NL with the Braves, Cardinals, and Dodgers. Well, pin a rose on your nose. <laughs> your uh, World Series was the Blue Jays over the Dodgers. <laughs> and mine was the Blue Jays over the Padres, which, hmm. if I remember correctly, I've had that pick for two years in a row now. So Blue Jays can't win, but I could still get the Padres in the World Series. I- I'm covered on both ends. I picked the Padres preseason, and I picked the Phillies last week. So I'm right either way. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's one way to do um, it. And then our MVP picks, I don't think. Uh, I guess kind of close. We ha- You had Vlad Jr. and Pete Alonso. Uh, I had Luis Robert or Jordan Alvarez and Trey Turner. Mm-hmm. So MVP. those were our preseason MLB picks. Um, what do you think of the format? A lot of talk about the format, uh, specifically from Dodger fans who are upset that their team lost. I don't know why they're complaining, to be honest. I don't, what is yeah. what does it have to do with anything? I why, haven't really read much. What of are it. they? Why are they complaining? They didn't. They got a buy. They didn't have to. Like, what's different? They think that the Padres had the advantage because they. They played a couple of games, I guess. I don't. But I don't they know. don't want the. They don't want the time off. It was three days. Yeah, I I don't under I don't know I haven't read into everything I don't see why they're complaining about it I don't I love the format the only thing I would change about the format which I think they will change and I think they only changed it was because of the the lockout but I think those games need to be on Tuesday Wednesday Thursday as opposed to Friday Saturday Sunday for those first round games those mm-hmm. wild card games but other than that I I like the format I think it's I don't have any issues getting a few more teams in there um, my complaint is. The Cardinals won their division, but they weren't rewarded for it. They had to play, but it also gives. I don't know how you do like that. You, you have you have to play for something, like yeah, like I, and I don't know if I'm wording it right. Like, okay, yeah, they won their division, but you still need to prove your worth and be better than the other two division winners. Like, if you're better than the other two division winners, then you get the buy. You know, so, so like, what would my be only? Your that's my only solution. Complaint. I don't have a solution. I, th- I think I mean, it's I, the fair way. It's to, fair. I think it's, it's fair. the fair way to do it. It just sucks that you know you win your division and then you lose in the wild card round. No, it's fair. You're not I really. Understand. You're not really a wild card. You're a division winner. So, yeah. um, and then and the AL side, the Astros did sweep the Mariners, but it was that was a great series. Took eighteen it was innings. So to get close. There. Yeah, there was was there two extra inning games in that one? I think. Well, uh, no. What was the uh, there was one other long extra inning? Oh, it was the wild card. It was the Rays and Guardians went like fourteen. Yeah. Um, but Yankees Guardians game five tonight back in New York. Uh, Jamison Tyon versus I think Aaron Savali. Um, that's been a pretty good series. Um, yep. I like the Guardians team, man. They're young, they're gritty. Terry Francona, I like them. We have not talked hardly any NBA, but the NBA season does kick off Wednesday night. Um, 76ers and Celtics, and I believe Lakers Warriors. I believe, don't quote me on that, but um, in localizing the NBA news, uh, should have talked, should have talked about this last week. Iodasumu 
has won the Bulls starting point guard spot. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, it was probably between him, Kobe White, and maybe Caruso. Yeah, probably for that for that spot. And and Io wins out. Um, I just the story continues to get better. I mean, I yeah. love that for him, uh, Chicago kid. Obviously, we everyone listening to this knows Io's story and knows, but mm-hmm. Chicago kid getting drafted by the Bulls. Um, about twenty rounds or twenty picks later than he should have been picked, but. Uh, to end up with the Bulls and to have a great rookie season, like I think he got like fourth or fifth in rookie of the year voting, maybe as all rookie team and now starting in his second year for the Bulls is just incredible. Um, we were this close to going to their preseason game last week because we were in Chicago and they had mm-hmm. a home game. Tu- they had a home game Tuesday night, um, so we were this close to going, but tickets were a little bit more than we wanted to pay even for preseason. So ended up not, but uh, but yeah, awesome, awesome stuff there. Uh, for io yeah i'm excited for him when i saw that that word kind of came out last week it, it was nice to see i mean yeah as you said I, I don't think the competition for that spot was great i think kobe white's kind of fallen off a little bit in caruso this is last year in chicago yeah i think um caruso was better probably coming off the bench yep. um yep. so i think it made sense for io to be in that role um so I'm I'm happy for him. Hopefully that uh, I, that's that's a good team. They're not a great team. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not they're not going to be. I don't think they're contending for an for the finals no. for an NBA championship. No. But I think they're they're good enough, and I think he can he can be a part of that. So happy to see it. Uh, hopefully they can they can do some things and make some noise this year. Stay healthy like a, too. Like a three to a six seed, something like that. That'd be great. May, maybe get to the second round. Yeah. Um, we need to get uh, which one of your brothers is the NBA? Cameron, see the NBA. Cameron, guy? yeah. We need to get we need to get Cameron. I I say this every year that I'm going to watch more NBA, but then three weeks into the season, I just find myself abandoning NBA and watching whatever college games on. I would I watched, so much I rather mean, watch have, college. Yeah, I've always been more college and NBA. I'll still watch some NBA. I'll still turn on a Bulls game every once in a while, but and I'll watch during the playoffs. But yeah. Um, yeah, I just I'm just more interested in college basketball than I am in the NBA. Um, there's yeah. really no. I think it's just because I just grew up as an Illinois fan. Like I just yeah. I didn't have an NBA team in my backyard. I mean, I was kind of a Laker fan. I was kind of a Pacer fan. I was never like hardcore on the Bulls or anything. It just wasn't yeah. really a thing for me. Illinois was. I think that's the same reason I don't have an NFL team. Like Illinois, I was going to in, Illinois games, basketball yeah. and football. I wasn't really going to NFL or NBA games. So. Yeah. Um, that's why for me personally, but I've just always been more college basketball than NBA. Yeah. I mean, everyone, when I moved to Champaign, not everyone, but they were like, are you a Bulls fan? Are you a, like, a Cubs fan? I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm six hours from Chicago. Like yeah. our closest NBA team to my hometown is not Memphis. even the Pacers. It's the, it's the Grizzlies and it's yeah. four hours away. Like yeah. I would just, that's why I don't care about the NBA or, or struggle to care about the NBA. Right. Um, would you have a guess on who's the odds on favorite for the, NBA championship. It's the Warriors. They're tied with someone else. Oh, uh, Milwaukee. At, at plus six hundred. Nope. There are three teams at plus six hundred on DraftKings. And it's not Milwaukee. Milwaukee's plus eight hundred. There are two teams with better odds than Milwaukee right now on DraftKings. Seventy Sixers. Nope. They're plus fifteen hundred. Celtics. Celtics are plus six hundred. The Warriors are plus 600, and there's one more Western Conference team at plus 600. Grizzlies? Nope. I don't know. LA. Who would it be? The Clippers? The Clip Show. The Clippers, plus 600. No chance. No chance. <laughs> None. No chance. You got I'll the Clippers, sh- Warriors, and Celtics plus 600. I'll take the field. <laughs> the Nets are plus 700. The Bucks are plus 800. And then that's about it. Uh, the, the Clippers the Bulls, haven't put it together. They got they what, made, Paul they, George, Kawhi. I don't know what they, they did this offseason. They just never put it together. I just yeah. don't trust them at all. The Bulls are plus 6,500. That puts them two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ninth best odds in the West. Team I forgot about is the Cavaliers. Adding Donovan Mitchell. To that mm-hmm. that core that That's that could be a, be a sneaky team. that could be a sneaky team in the East. That's going to be uh, a fun team. We don't like we said we don't care about the NBA enough to make picks on what we think this season, but I think Cavaliers could be sneaky, and 
the Pelicans could be sneaky. Those are my sleeper picks. We'll do sleeper. Could be. I like I like those are those are my sleepers. The Pelicans and the and the Cavaliers. The last NBA note, the best studio show in all of sports. <laughs> Inside the NBA, they each have signed How did long I know? extensions. Shaq. That is my favorite thing about the NBA. Kenny Smith, Charles yes. Barkley, and Eddie Johnson have all signed long-term Ernie extensions. Johnson. Ernie Johnson. What I say? Eddie? You said Eddie. Eddie. Ernie Johnson. Sorry, Ernie. Um, have also signed long-term extensions uh, to, to stay with inside the NBA. Thought Chuck might be leaving for live golf there for a second, but turned him down and they yeah, are sticking I think around. It was, I think it was all leverage. I yeah. Think Chuck was um, and I think I misspoke earlier. The season starts tomorrow night. There are two games tomorrow night. The Bulls start Wednesday night, I think, with the most of the other other uh, NBA uh, teams. Correct. Watching any shows or movies? Oh, uh, goodness. Um, not really. Um, caught up. I finally watched the new Scream. I don't know if I talked about that or not. It Mm-mm. came out earlier this year. I finally watched that a few weeks ago. Um, didn't make Have it you watched the new week. Hocus Pocus? I did watch New Hocus Pocus. Is yeah. it worth it? I mean, do you have two hours to kill? I mean, I yeah. Mean, it's it's fine. It's fine. I mean, okay. It's, Is it better than the first one? No, absolutely not. Uh, I mean, I'm not even like, I don't love Hocus Pocus to begin with, but I enjoy it. I watch it every year around Halloween. Um, What's your no, favorite it's... Halloween movie? My favorite Halloween movie. Are we I'm counting? Like, do horror movies count? Yeah. I mean, I'm not a big horror movie person, but Scream is my favorite horror movie. And that's the one that I probably revisit the most. I mean, I enjoy Hocus Pocus. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm not, I'm just not a big horror movie person in general. Nope. Um, me neither. So, Scream is probably close. Hocus Pocus would be in the conversation. I mean, I, I do enjoy Nightmare Before Christmas. I know there, there's, you know, half the population says it's a Christmas movie and half the population say it's a Halloween movie. Yeah. I say it's I say it's my favorite Halloween movie. Um, but it'd be oh, one of those three, me. probably. How about uh, you? You got a you got one? Uh Halloween Town. Mm. I don't, I don't that's know. Already, that's been on in our house a couple times. I don't yeah. uh I'm not a big scary movie, Halloween movie person. No, I'm not either. Um, I mean it would probably be Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus yeah. is a is a classic. That's the sequel's fine. It's just it's not gonna blow you away. It's just All a right. It's content for it's content for the mouse house. That's yeah, pretty much all no it kidding. is. They're they're putting um, out so much crap lately. Yeah, I'll go see uh, Black Adam this weekend. I'm not into, expecting oh, much yeah. from it, but yeah. Uh, and then it really picks up here soon. So, um, lot lots coming out. Uh, starting later this month and Wakanda Forever. Did you see the posters that they released today for Creed Three? Yeah, with I did. Jonathan Majors. I didn't even realize Jonathan Majors was in that, but he's gonna have a year, man. What like, else this is, he is in? his time? Um, so his big thing was um he's on a TV show for a while, but then he he's now in the MCU. He's he's Kang in the MCU. So he was in Loki and he's gonna be the villain in Ant Man. Okay, he's gonna be, I saw someone he's like gonna be quoted he's and... the Thanos basically of this okay this round of movies that makes sense movies someone quoted um, the poster and said kang versus killmonger yeah so i'm just okay. i'm excited for that i was excited for it lovecraft country that was a tv show he was in uh but he's kind of just recently kind of popped off so um but yeah that i'm excited for that but it's not coming out till march um but yeah lots coming out here in the next few weeks black panther um is it Letitia or is it michael b jordan i think it's well <laughs> I still am working on that theory. Um, I think multiple people will wear the suit during the movie. Really? Um, yeah, I think it'll be like a, you know, not just one person type of thing. Now, at the end, by the end of the movie, they probably will have named somebody. Um, and I'm still not entirely sure who it is. It's probably Letitia, but I still think it could be Lupita Nyong'o, um, Nakia. I think that's probably a better choice for them personally um but they have options but i think during the course of the movie i think multiple people were will wear the black panther suit that's my prediction okay how long do you think i should wait to go see it because i don't want to sit in a full theater two weeks three weeks if we go longer i mean the, the problem with it is that 
Well, yeah, I mean, you're probably good for two weeks, but it's that strategically placed one where two weeks after that's going to be Thanksgiving and a lot of people are going to be going then. And mm. then it's just going to kind of pick up. So I'm sure you can find a time to go where it won't be super crowded, but like a I don't, matinee. yeah, probably. I mean, I don't think you're going to, I mean, I don't know. A lot of other things are going to start coming out too. Avatar will be out shortly after that. So there'll be other options for people to go to, but it'll be, it'll be busy theaters for a while for sure. All right. I'm still not liking the indoor crowds and whatnot, but okay. Wear a mask. I just don't like people. No, it's not that. I just don't want to sit next to people. (laughs) And with that, we'll end the show. Thank you for listening. Um, Episode, what did I say? 75. No one asked us, as always. Our our numbers continue to grow. Our last episode was our second best ever. So thank you to everyone that might still be listening for liking, subscribing, and sharing um, and continuing to grow this thing um, while we do our best to try and entertain you for about an hour so um for logan i'm craig see you next time bye